this is how I like to create contour cut lines for printing with VersaWorks or other rips. First we want to make sure that we have a vector art. So you can go to View, Outline, and this will show you your outline or wireframe view. So we know that these are all paths. Go back, we can, turn, we can switch it to our preview mode or back to fill mode. So first thing I'd like to do is we have our original. Let's go up to the hamburger icon and we're going to duplicate this. Let's double click on the name and switch it to cut contour with capital C's no spaces. The name isn't crucial. I just like to keep everything easy to uh, remember for the future. So we're going to turn off our original artwork. Now that we have our cut contour line that was copied, we can select everything. You can also use Control A or Command A to select all. Once we have our item, we can go to our Pathfinder. Then we can choose the Unite and that will weld everything together. If we switch to our wireframe mode, we see we have a lot of little pieces that are left in here. So let's go up and select the little icon with the plus, which is our group selection tool. Press down your shift key and click the path on the outside. With this item, we have this one path that runs all the way around it, which looks pretty good. So we can go ahead and just hit the delete key and delete all our little problem areas inside. Now that we look pretty good, let's switch back to our fill mode or preview mode. Grab our item. Hit this little swap, fill and stroke. So now we have no fill. We have our stroke path. Choose our roll and color library, which is a cut contour, or you can make a spot color that is named exactly like this, cut contour with capital C's and no space. Now when we have our item selected and we go to our colors, we can see the name is actually cut contour with no fill. You do not want to have a fill on your cut contour lines. It can cause problems in certain areas. We can go up to our layers. We can turn the preview of our original artwork back on. And we can see that the cut contour line exactly follows that path of our original artwork. If we wanted to create a bleed so that if our cutting was off at all, we didn't get a fine white line around the edge of this art, we can turn off our cut path for now, select our original art. We're going to go to the hamburger and du duplicate it again. Let's name this copy bleed and just click and drag it all the way to the bottom. Make sure that there's a line under your last one like that and you're not dropping it into your original artwork. Now we can turn off our original artwork. We can ungroup and grab our plaque outline path. Come over to strokes. I'm sorry, go to color. Take our fill color and drag it to the stroke. When we go to the stroke, go ahead and amplify the color by whatever bleed you would like. You'll notice we have some areas here that are kind of shooting out. We don't really need those to print out. So we can go ahead and click the round and the round joints. Right. Now, if we had alter other colors sticking out, we could do the same thing with those other colors. It doesn't matter what the artwork looks like inside here because we're just going to lay our original art back over top and turn our cut line on. And we have an easy way to do our bleeds with our cut contour. The reason why I like to do it this way, it keeps everything straightforward, easy to utilize, it's quick. If you ever need to go back to your original art, here's our original art untouched. So we could manipulate it for other items or if we had to send it out for something different, we still have the original artwork. If we would like to do a white line instead of the bleed. We can get rid of our bleed. Let's go to our cut contour. We'll select our cut contour. 
go to object. We want to go down to compound and make a compound path. The next thing we will do is go object, path, offset path. The offset is the distance for our offset from our original art. So we can make that whatever thickness we prefer. I prefer to do rounds when you're doing your outline like this so you don't get any jagged cuts. If you want sharp edges, you can go to miter and switch your miter limit to like 500. Um, that will keep all the strong points that you may need for your artwork. Right. I'm going to go back to round. This doesn't matter if it's 1 or 500 on the rounds. It's just how tight you want your rounds to be able to go. We hit OK. Now we have our original path and our new offset path that we just made. The reason why we did the compound is the compound first keeps these two paths separate. If we had forgotten to do the compound path, both of these would be selected at the same time. So we can just delete our inside path, go back and turn on our original artwork, and now we would have a white space around our cut or decal cut for the item. If we wanted bleed with a heavy line, we could also turn on our bleed but that would give us a heavy black line. For the final step, if we want to save it out to be used in our RIP, go to File, Save As. We're going to choose PDF. Hit OK. You want to make sure that your compatibility is set to the newest version of Adobe. Keep the Preserve Illustrator editing capabilities on. We do want to embed a thumbnail. You do not want the optimize. Um, the preview afterwards will not change anything. It just will have it pop up as soon as you save the file as like a preview. The uh, other thing, we want to create Adobe layers from the top down. If we keep these three checked, we can save this out. We can open it back up later and all our layers and everything will be maintained. Also, it'll help keep things from being flattened when they're saved out and causing some transparency issues. When it comes to compressions, we want to check and make sure that we have do not, do not, and do not on all of these down first three down samples. You can compress text in line art that will not affect your final output. But adjusting the top three can compress your image artwork and may make your printing resolution lower than you'd like. So now that we're set, you can come up to this little save icon, click save. Hit OK. And now we have a print ready in our drop down. Can hit save. And it'll save our PDF.